Okay, so there's a lot of really good information and videos out there showing how Clo 3 d is used as a visualization tool. And there's a lot of emphasis placed on the 3D aspect the app. 3D aspect of it and how it looks and less emphasis placed on the applications of the 2D pattern side of the program. And so in this video, I want to have a look at how that physical, how the 3D garment translates into a physical garment. So in a previous video, I went through how I developed the pattern for this dress and then how I fit it in 3D, made modifications 3D, and then made a physical muslin of the dress, made a few more fit modifications, and then finally made the final garment. So without further ado, here is what the actual dress ended up looking like looking like and I'll slice that into the video right now I was super thrilled with how it came out and super thrilled about the process because it's so cool being able to go from being able to like go through me so many iterations of of fit um corrections in 3d and not have to sew a new sample every single time you want to change just like like just the seam line or, or remove some fullness or add some fullness. So I'll link that video um, below and, and you can go check out how I developed the pattern for this dress. But um, now I also wanna have a look at the 3D sample. So I can splice that in right now. And this is what it looks like in 3D. And the, here again is what it looks like as a physical dress. And I'm really happy with the, with the one, with the way that they compare to one another. Okay, let's have a look at some of the difference between the two versions. So the physical version ends up having a lined bodice because I wanted a clean finish along the neckline and the armholes. And you can put a lining in 3D, but it doesn't give you that much extra information and it's a lot harder to get a stable simulation when you put a lining in there. So the lining, it doesn't exist in 3D. Also the hem, um, there's a, I think it's a five centimeter hem at the bottom of this dress. And a lesson learned actually from this is I didn't um, make my seam allowance uh, have the right angle at the bottom of the dress. And I'll try to show a sample of this right now, but I made my seam allowance go straight down. And because it's an A-line dress, when I turn it up, there's like excess fabric in there which I had a lot of trouble <laughs> trying to like ease in to the garment. Um, so one thing that helps with this is um, tapering your seam allowance. And this is a tool that's available in Clo, and I didn't take advantage of it. So I kind of just <laughs> struggled with it. I ironed it in and I ended up using the blind hem foot on my sewing machine to uh, get it to lie flat, but it worked out. Um, I thought about <laughs> hand sewing it for, for about five seconds and that's not me. I don't hand sew. So I got it to work out uh, in the end anyways, but that was another like just difference and, and something that I learned while making this dress. And uh, another thing is that um, in 3D, my body's not soft, my skin isn't soft. So it doesn't, it's still, you still get a slightly different fit, but because this is a body scan avatar, the shape is pretty close to what my physical body shape is in real life. And so it's just like um, if you had a dress form that you were sewing on that was close to what your body measurements were, um, it's it's the results that you get are closer to that, except for it's better. <laughs> it's, it's better in 3D because uh, this is my actual, this is much closer to my actual body shape and proportions than if I were using like a dress form, um, the shape and the posture is never quite right. Okay, so now I want to talk to, I wanted to talk about a few things that are essential for when you're comparing a physical garment to the 3D sample of the garment. 
First of all, your avatar has to be representative of the avatar or person that's trying on the dress in reality. So if you have a, and this um, comes into play, especially with different bus sizes. So if you have a person with the same chest circumference as the avatar, but the, the bust is much smaller or larger, on the actual person than it is on the avatar, then the fit's gonna be different. So you have to be starting with an avatar that's close to not only the same measurements, but the same shape as the person that's going to be wearing the garment. The second thing that's essential for comparing a 3D sample to the physical sample is making sure that the fabric is the same. So um, in this case, I'm kind of lucky because the muslin fabric drapes very similarly to the way that the um, this is actually a, a linen fabric that I'm using for the dress. And if you're interested in this fabric, it's actually, I'm going to shout out the spool, the spool sewing studio in Comox on Vancouver Island. Um, this is where I got this really pretty linen fabric from. So just shout out to Nicole. Your shop is awesome. Anyways, back to my point, the, 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 digital fabric has to have the same properties as the physical fabric so like i said in this case muslin was easy to find sometimes it's more difficult to find the physical properties of the fabric that you're looking for um but you can't really it's not really fair to make a comparison if you're not using a like a like to like fabric and the third thing is uh making sure that you're using the correct pattern so if you make the pattern in 3d it has to be the same pattern that you're using for your physical garment as well and that i mean that just makes sense right like if you are comparing one thing to another you have to be using the same pattern so in conclusion i'm super interested in this aspect of of digital design the ability to go from that digital space into the physical space so if you like this video and you want to see more videos like this i'm probably going to be doing more so make sure you come check out my channel leave some comments in the comment section and let me know what you're interested in seeing and let me know how you're using let me know how you're using Chloe and whether or not um you're using your patterns to make physical samples Anyways, thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll catch you next time.